so the plow is constant flow oil and then you just divert the oil where you're wanting whether it's to turn it over whether it's to adjust that movement which takes it from in furrow to out of furrow i quite like the fact that it's on constant flow because you've got your spools empty then and it doesn't take away spools so we're fine for the front there it goes and the front's needing to come down a wee bit i'm just yoking this plow back up onto the fence so we can get it home it's category three on the other plow so I'm narrowing these in again i quite like these pins actually they're just they've got a recess in them and there's a wee wire down below there it is and the wire indents in the recess so they're just kind of pressure fit so that's it in and you just have to give it a big yank to pull it out quick release no linch pins to lose or snap your fingers on right we yoked up you can see so this plow it is a four plus one really you can see there's a joint there. The beam of this compared to the other plow, which we'll see in a second coming back the way, it's just a lot lighter, this plow. It's just getting a bit sloppy, this plow. There's a bit of slop in these bearings here, here, and the headstock bearing in there. They've been away away at that end for a while, so we'll head around there and see what's happening. Don't know what this is like without a front weight on it. Um, not very good, apparently. Oh, there's a wheelie. And turn to the right. Oh, I went a wee bit that time. Right, we'll go up here. They've been up here for a while. I don't know what's... They must be setting something up. Go and have a look. Got the plow on now. Oh, they must have got going. It's been a bit of a faffing about kind of day. I've still not shifted any bales. I'm starving. It's three o'clock. So this is the first wedge here. You can see it's not quite doing a good job yet. Just taking a wee minute to set up right. We'll see on the second with they've been fiddling about with it. It's just bunged up there and pulled itself in for a... <laughs> now it's got some soil stuck to it, it's a lot heavier. Oh Jesus. It's a wee bit of an unfair demo because it's just been, it's there for the afternoon and that's it only. We've not had time to get weight sorted out and uh, really should have more weight on the front. Well, it needs it, you can see. I'm going to go and get a stone, put on the front, balance it out a bit. It's a bit of an unfair demo. I'll take this back to the yard, come up with a forklift and a stone, put some weight on the front, and that'll give us a better indication. The guy from Fent has just phoned me, so they're going to come out first thing in the morning, tomorrow morning, and get the software sorted out on this and figure that problem out. So that's good, get it sorted quickly. It's, it's better figuring it out now than actually us only machine that we need the ISOBUS to work properly. So the fresh spreader works in ISOBUS, but it's got its own screen, so we don't work it through the machine. If you're new and you've not subscribed, please subscribe down there, maybe, and like the video. Cheers. Some faffing about we've been doing today. Ah, well, we'll get there. Just realized all the big stones um, got shifted along the road or buried. My hat's fallen off. So we need to find something heavy. Right, two drums of water. They were hard work getting on there. We'll get them onto the front of the plow like we had it with the KV. Make it a fair test. Lunch. I'm starving. Ooh. Right, come on. Let's try this again. This has got a hydraulic depth wheel and we've been ploughing, we've done two widths at the maximum depth and trying to figure out how this works. Messing about for ages and then you have to have the plough down for the pressure to, which kind of makes sense, that's where you'd set your depth when the plough is down. Anyway, we've got oil flow to these two rams which sets your depth. And we'll try it again. We've got some weight on the front, it's probably still not enough. <laughs> right, there we go, we're a lot shallower now. I mean, look at the depth there compared to what we were at. Starting to move a wee bit now. This extension update, this is a storeroom which has been uh, <laughs> just full of boxes. We're just in the process of moving all our stores about, so stuff is abandoned everywhere at the moment. Also, it's coming up to Christmas, so it's mega busy. Uh, so, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. Hopefully, everything will be done kind of by the end of January. Chiller unit. Oh, that's okay. It's Camille. Um, this is the chiller unit here, so it's finished. It's full, basically, already. 
I need to go around the sides with pieces of wood to stop boxes and trays getting pushed against it and scuffing it up. I need to do that maybe tomorrow. Otherwise, things are going pretty smoothly. I've put my bonnet down somewhere, but anyone who's ordered one, thank you very much. As of right now, there's still one, one bobble left, but I think by the time I put this video out, there'll be no bobbles left. All the green beanies are gone. There's a few gray beanies. There's quite a few kids hats, a few sets of baby dungarees, and maybe three or four adult caps. But all the big fluffy bobble ones, they're gone. Anyway, thank you very much. We're moving now. You can see number four and number one haven't really shined up yet. They're kind of dragging and making a mess, to be honest. We're getting there. We've definitely not got it perfect, that's for sure. But we're running out of time. It's time to abandon ship. It started, we started getting it working a bit better. Just uh, We just didn't have the time. The lorry's here to pick it up. So I'll need to take it back round. It's also too heavy for this tractor, so need to be careful with the other ones that they weren't too heavy for this tractor because we've not had them on this tractor. All right, we're in transport mode. We'll take it back to the yard. We've also just been told the lorries disappeared so we can mess about with it first thing in the morning. So you don't need to take the top link off. If you release this pin up here, it's got a floating kind of top link here for transport. Um, do I like it? It's all right. The KV transported the best on the road. The, it didn't swing out at all. It follows. The whole headstock kind of swivels. Anyway, back to the yard. Things got dark pretty quick. And just like that, it's a day down the pan. No bales shifted. So that's the Isobus screen for it. It does have variable width, so if I nudge across here, uh, that one, so that will increase or decrease the width. So I, th I think it's on about 16 inches at the moment. Oh, there you go. It tells you exactly what it's on. Can I do that just now? Ah. So I can nudge that and vary the width between each furrow. So here you go. So see it getting wider there from top to bottom. And again. Ah. And you can do that with um, the depth of the wheel, um, how far it sticks out for your offset with the tractor when you're plowing on land. Quite a lot of snazzy features. Kev's shifting his tractor inside. That tractor's undercover. I still need to shift. There's a tractor there with bales on the back of it. It's going to rain tomorrow. I'll take that home with me, actually. That's what I'll do. Along to yard two. Right, home time. Off we go. Bales in the back. It's been some flipping day. If you wanted to go off of um, actual productive work done, the cattle got fed maybe 10 widths of a plough of shoddy ploughing because we didn't really get it set up well and I've loaded a trailer of bales. Anyway, tomorrow's a busy day. We've got straw going out, Percy's going away, get a bit more demo stuff done with that plough. Want to get it onto the fence to see weight wise how it compares to the other tractors because we didn't have the other ploughs on the New Holland. Good night. Yes, she is. Anywho, good night. Subscribe if you're not already and like.